Hello students, this lesson is about domestic electric circuit. This is the last topic in magnetic effects of electric current in 10th standard physics. This topic is very important for the coming examination and also it is very important for our day to day life because every day at home at our workplace we are dealing with the electrical circuits. So we should know the basic ideas on in electrical wiring of our building. Here, in a domestic electric circuit, there are three different type of wires. The one wire is live wire. Usually it will be red in color. The other one is neutral wire. It can be black or gray color. And the third one is earth wire which is always given a green color. One end of the earth wire will be connected to the earth by using a long metallic rod and the electricity department they will be giving us the live wire and neutral wire. So here the live wire and neutral wire, live wire always carries high current and neutral wire will be neutral with zero potential. If the circuit is open means if there is no device working in the circuit neutral wire, neutral wire will not carry any current the live wire and neutral wire in the beginning of the circuit connection will be connected to electricity board fuse and electricity meter these two are connected by the department of electricity and they are only supposed to operate the electric board fuse and the electricity meter the current that we are consuming in our building will be completely passing through the electricity meter which read the units of electricity means in kWh, kilo, watt hour that we consume every second. The complete electricity that we consume here will be passing through the electricity meter. So it will give the reading and by checking that reading we are getting the monthly electricity bill. After the electricity, electric, electricity meter then we have to take the live wire and neutral wire to the main distribution box. Main distribution box uh, where we have to plan the number of branches needed for our circuit. In the main distribution box we can connect a main switch here and also we have to branch out the circuit into number of branches depending upon the need of the building. In this branch we can have two standard lines. One is for uh, current rating of 5 ampere. The other one is for current rating of 15 ampere. Usually 5 ampere line is used for normal devices like bulbs, fans, etc. And the 15 ampere line is used for high power devices like AC, geyser, uh, refrigerator, etc. So how many branches are needed here in the main distribution box? Then we have to do some calculation and accordingly we have to make number of branches. For example, in this building, suppose in this room, I have three bulbs of 18 watts. So total power 18 into 3 plus one fan of uh, 60 watts, so plus 60 and one AC of 2000 watts, so plus 2000. Like that you keep on adding the total power of all other devices in your building. Suppose for example, when I added the power of all devices in my building, I am getting a total power of uh, P is equal to say 10,000 watts, 10,000 watts. And we are operating these devices in 220 volt, 220 volt. So we can calculate how much current will be flowing through the main wire here till the distribution box if, uh, if we switch on all the devices in our building. We can calculate that current by using the equation P is equal to V into I. So I will be equal to P divided by V. That is here, total power in this building is 10,000 watts and it is operating in 220 volt. So this will come 45.5 ampere. So we need in this building total 45.5 ampere. We can 
uh, rounded to 45 ampere. So the main wire should be the main wire up to the distribution box should be special wire. It should be able to carry 45 ampere of current because when we switch on all the devices in the building through these wires, 45 ampere of current will be flowing. Now we can calculate how many branches are needed. We know that in a normal wiring, the normal line, maximum allowed current is 5 ampere. Here we have 45 ampere current. So how many branches are needed for us? That is 45 ampere and in each branch 5 ampere. That is equal to 9 branches are required for this building. So in this distribution box, I should divide the live wire into 9 branches. In each branch I should connect a fuse wire or a circuit breaker so that it will burn, the fuse will burn or the circuit breaker will switch off if a current of more than 5 ampere is flowing through that. Or if you want to connect a high power device also, you can connect one line 15 ampere, one line 15 ampere fuse. The remaining out of 9 branches, one line if you take 15 ampere, the remaining will be only 6 branches. We can divide the remaining into 6 branches, each branch with the 5 ampere fuse and one branch of special for high power device with the 15 ampere fuse or 15 ampere circuit breaker. So this way we have to plan the distribution box. It means we have to branch out the live wire and neutral wire according to the number of branches needed for the building. Now, for giving electrical connection, suppose I want to bring, I want to start the electrical connection from this room. So I should take one live wire, a 5 ampere line and a neutral wire from the distribution box, take that wire through the pipeline, bring to the room and inside the room, first connect, make a junction at the live wire and take a wire from that, connect that to a switch and from the switch to a bulb and from the bulb to the neutral. So if I switch on the circuit, the bulb will blow. And again, if in this same room, I, if I want to connect a fan, again from the same live wire, make a junction, give to a switch and from the switch to a regulator and the regulator to fan and from the fan to the neutral. So if I switch on the circuit and adjust the regulator, I can control the speed of the fan. And thirdly, if I want to connect a 3-pin plug for using an iron box or some other device, we have to connect a 3-pin plug. In 3-pin plug, there are 3 pins in that. 2 pins are same size and the third pin is thick one. That thick pin is called earth pin. Out of the two pins, small pins, one pin can be given to the live wire through a switch and the other small pin can be connected directly to the neutral wire. And the thick pin, that earth pin, the thick pin should be connected by the green wire and that green wire should go to the thick copper wire which is connected to the earth by using a long metallic rod. So the three pin plug connection is power. Now we can keep on connecting like this until the maximum current flowing through the circuit, this branch becomes 5 ampere. We can calculate that how much power can be connected by using this equation I equal to P by V. Add the power of each device. Suppose this bulb is 18 watts plus 60 watts plus 1000 watts of iron box. Add all the power. Divide by 220. When it becomes 5 ampere, stop connection means add the power of all devices in that branch divided by 220 when it becomes 5 ampere stop connection again go to the main distribution box take another wire through a fuse of 5 ampere and bring to the room and a neutral wire start connection until it takes maximum 5 ampere so this way we have to complete the connection for the entire building okay and another important point you can see here all the fuses and the switches are connected in live wire we should not connect fuses and switches in neutral wire. Now, we can see in detail about the earth wire. Earth wire is one of the safety measures used in domestic electric wire. In our home, all electrical devices with the metallic covering should be connected to the earth wire by using a 3-pin plug. And it is one of the safety measures because if there is any current leakage to the metallic covering, and when we touch it, we make an electric shock. That can be avoided by connecting the metallic covering to the earth wire. For example, here, this is an iron box. OK, 
Okay, in this iron box, on the metallic body, there is a screw, and that screw is connected to a green wire. This is called earth wire. So all metallic, all devices with the metallic covering, on the metallic body, there will be a screw, and that screw will be connected to the green wire, and that green wire should be connected to the, the other end. This end of the green wire should be connected to the thick pin of the earth pin, and that thick pin will go here, and through that, it will go to the earth. So if there is any leakage of current in this device that will flow to the earth and earth is always zero potential and since the metallic cover is connected to the earth and uh, potential of this sur uh, metallic surface will be zero. So the user will not get electric shock. So what is the actual functioning of the earth wire? We can see here. In this there are two wires here. Here we are giving the supply. This is for live wire, this is for neutral wire. When we give electric supply here, the live wire here, the current will pass through the live wire through the control switch for controlling the temperature and it will pass through the nichrome uh, heating element here. This nichrome heating element, it is concealed inside this one and it is perfectly insulated from the metallic surface. So normally, uh, if you touch here to feel the temperature, you won't get electric shock. And if there is current flowing through the metallic surface, you will get a severe electric shock and your muscles will contract and you will have a strong grip on the surface so the person will die. To avoid that, we have to keep this metallic surface always at zero potential. Now, uh, see here, when electric current flows through our body, two things are happening. The first one is that our body temperature will go down so that the viscosity of the bread will increase and the bread will become very thick, it won't be able to flow. The second thing is that our muscles will contract. So if a person is getting an electric shock, the first step is that we should remove the electrical contact either by using an insulator material like, like plastic or switch off the main. And second step is that we should hit on the body of the person to increase the body temperature because when the electricity falls through our body, our body temperature will go down and the bread will not be able to flow. So when we hit on the body, the body temperature will increase, the bread will start flowing so we can save the life. The second thing is that when you touch the surface, your muscles will contract. So whenever you are having a doubt that there is a chance of electricity in this surface, don't touch like this, touch from the back side because your muscles will not contract like this. So you may be safe. So if you have any, any doubt about electricity, don't touch that area with your uh, palm like this. It will uh, give you a strong electric shock. Now here, you can see what is happening. When we are giving the electrical supply connection here, the live wire is connected to this one, red wire and the neutral wire here. And the current will flow through the live wire through the control switch which is used to control the temperature and it will flow to the nichrome heating element. The nichrome heating element is perfectly insulated from the uh, metallic covering. So normally current from the nichrome will not come to the surface. Suppose by mistake this live wire is bent and touching the surface like this. If it is touching on the metal surface due to the temperature, the insulation of the live wire will melt and the copper wire inside will come directly in contact with the, the metallic covering. If the copper wire is in contact with the metallic covering, then current has two paths for flow. One is through the live wire, through the high resistance nichrome. The second one is that through the metallic covering, a low resistance path. Current always through low resistance path. So the most of the current will be flowing through the metallic covering. So when a person touches here, we will get a severe electric shock. To avoid that, we are connecting this metallic body through the screw, through the green wire, through the thick pin and to the earth wire. So what is happening here? When, if the current is flowing through the metallic covering, that current will flow through this thick wire, green wire, through the thick pin, it will flow to the earth. And since the earth is zero potential, the surface also will be zero potential. So when you touch here, you will not get a severe electric shock because uh, it is easy for, car for the current to flow through the earth wire than through your body. So you will be safe. Means uh, your body will be having more resistance rather than the earth wire. The second thing is that when, uh, when a short circuit takes place inside, means the uh, live wire is melted, it is in contact with the metallic covering and high current is flowing through this. What will happen here? The current coming from the live wire through the fuse or circuit breaker through the uh, switch to the device and from the device it is passing through the metallic covering to the earth. So in that path completely 
thickness is very high, so resistance is very less, means current will be very high, so that the current passing through the fuse wire will be more than 5 ampere, the fuse will burn or the circuit breaker will switch off. So, it is a double protection. If there is any defect in the, inside the device, if there is any contact, direct contact of live wire with the metallic covering, the moment you switch on the device, the fuse will be burned or circuit breaker will switch off. Even if the uh, circuit breaker is not switching off, even, even then if you are touching this one, you will not get a severe electric shock because that current is flowing through the earth. So it is a double protection. If there is any defect, any current flowing through the metallic covering, the, the fuse will burn and you will not get severe electric shock. So these are the total important points we have to consider while making the domestic electric circuit. I hope this is use, useful for you, this coming examination and also in your day to day life when we are dealing